Hello, welcome back to my tutorial series. Today I like us to take a look at the Sims 4 Mod Constructor version 5, which is the new beta version of the Mod Constructor created by Zerbu. In my past videos, I've looked at version 4. Version 5 is actually a great upgrade because it has the existing features and also some new features that I'd like us to look at today. I'll link in the description below github.com where Zerbu has uploaded the Mod Constructor version 5. When you click on the link for the constructor, you'll see below there's a section called Assets and there's a zip file. You'll click on the zip file and download it to your preferred folder. And then once you open it, you can extract it using either WinWare, WinZip, or any type of unzipping program that you have on your computer. Once it's done extracting, you'll have the folder and you want to click on the program here. It's called Constructor 5 and it's an executable. Once you double click on it, it will open and you'll be able to assign a creator name and a mod name. Okay, so you'll put your creator name and the mod name and then click Create Mod on the right. Okay, so you'll notice immediately it looks different from version 4. It's a little bit cleaner, but it has a lot of features. So on the left, you'll see it says add element. On the previous version, you'll notice it was in a different location. It was more at the top of the screen. Once you click add element, you'll see a selection of options. Now, I, su I suggest immediately clicking here show all so that you can see everything and then expanding it a little bit. So you'll see it has the buff option, it has the trait option, um, it has the lot trait option, mixer interaction. Those were all things that were in version 4. Some of the new things that I think are really cool are the rel bit. Now rel bits are short for relationship bits. Relationship bits are the relationships between sims in the game. So for example, when you go to your relationship panel and it shows if a sim is married, if they're engaged, if they're friends, and so on and so forth, those are their relationships. You can actually create your own using this option. So for example, you click create element, you'll see rel bit, and then you can create a name for the relationship. So let's say you wanted to create a new type of enemy called mortal enemies. You can create that. So I put we hate each other more than anything. Then you can choose the icon. You can choose one of these options on the left. And then just as with version four, you can choose different icons. So the buffs ones are different icons that are assigned usually to buffs. Those are usually in blue or gray. Headlines are what I like to use because they're more, usually in color. So let's say we can pick anything. Um, this tutorial I'll just pick this select image and then you have your image now you can also choose custom images by browsing to your computer and choosing the image to import next you can decide if it has a fixed duration meaning it can expire after a certain amount of time and this is in um, seconds so let's say maybe you want it to only last for uh, in one minute you would put 60 seconds in if you want it to be a permanent relationship uncheck it so this can be used in a lot of different ways you can make it so maybe after sims fight each other they have resentment in addition to the buffs that they already get the relationship that they resent each other because of the fight for maybe an hour and then it expires you can also make one-sided relationships so maybe you wanted to make it so that um, your sim has a crush on the other sim but they don't care you can make it one-sided so it's only added to one sim. To delete an element from your mod, you can always just click the X here and it's deleted. Another thing that uh, was introduced in the previous version, but it's a, little, um, it's a little bit easier to use here, Holiday Tradition. So when you click Holiday Tradition and click Create Element, you can click on the Holiday Tradition and then you can name it. 
So this is the goal. Um, this is basically what is used to decide whether or not the holiday tradition is successful. So for example, uh, you can say jog. And you can give a description. Again, you can choose an icon. I'll just pick something for purposes. And then conditions. Then you can add a condition. You can say if it always runs, um, if you have to have a certain buff, if a certain interaction has to take place, and so on and so forth. So for example, if I choose interactions, I can click browse. And then let's see, do we have one for jogging? Yes, we do. So we can choose go jogging. And then once this uh, sim starts jogging, that will complete this goal. And you can have multiple items. You can have different conditions. So let's say you wanted to add another one. Click that, click this, this little wrench to the right, click interaction running, browse. I'm gonna click jog again. And I'm gonna click, for example, jog here together, select, and choose as many as you want. Preferences, okay, so when the holiday is set on your calendar, you can decide whether or not a sim cares about it or not. So for example, this may be something that, of course, toddlers wouldn't care about. They, they don't have the option to jog in the game. So you would basically erase this if you wanted to change the name, or you can keep it as is. So we're gonna keep it as is um, from it being a toddler. Now, there's currently two presets, child and toddler, or you can make your own by erasing it. I'm gonna keep it with toddler. I'm gonna add, um, click child, click toddler. Oh, see it toggles back and forth. Now you can add multiple of these if you wanna have multiple preferences. You can also add conditions. So let's say, you want a sim with a certain relationship to your sim to not care either. Let's say you choose that, and then you choose bits, and then browse, and then you can choose the relationship. So maybe father or the roommate or stepbrother, they have a certain preference. Holiday buffs. Now, in the current game, you, get, you can get buffs before and during the holiday. And then below, you can put a reason. Now, when you click Browse, it's going to allow you to select things that are already in the game. So you can choose by base game here or by expansion pack. And then you can choose the buff. I just picked something random. So during the holiday, they're going to get this buff. You can also choose, that's during the holiday, you can also choose something before the holiday. Again, you can browse, select it, they will get that before the holiday. There's also odd jobs. There's also complex whim sets. If you want to create a whim set, I'll look at that in a further video. Um, but for now, I'd like to just briefly go over creating buffs in this new version. It's very similar to the other one, just a little bit more streamlined. So for example, you click your buff, put the element name. This is what will show on that left-hand panel. Click create element, and then you'll see it on the left. Then just as before, you put your name and your description. And you can choose your icon again. Okay, so you can choose whether or not this buff has an emotion. Um, emotions, again, are happy, fine, sad, angry, tense. You know, you have all those different ones that are already in the game. Here to the right, you have this little wrench, and you can pick which one. So, for example, maybe when this sim has this buff, it puts them in a more confident mood. Okay, click select. And then the weight. So the way the emotion system works in The Sims is each emotional buff has a weight. Um, there's certain ones that weigh higher than others. So for example, um, if your Sim is happy, 
the, that buff may sometimes be overpowered and have a three. That's why sometimes when something sad happens in the game, if your sim doesn't automatically get sad and it seems like they're so happy, that's because that happy buff has a higher weight. So if you want to make your buff overpower other buffs, you can hike up the weight. And you can kind of play around with that in game to see how it works. You can also uncheck it if you don't want any mood or mo emotion tied to it. Has fixed duration. This will decide whether or not the buff expires. So, for example, again, if you want it to expire after a certain amount of time, you can set it here with the duration. Again, this is in seconds. Add a motion category. This will make other buffs decay at a certain rate based on the emotion tied to this particular buff. And then is none persistent. So basically that means if you're traveling, if you basically go to another lot, then the, the emotion or buff goes away. It doesn't continue. So let's say you wanted something to only be at a certain location. And then once they go to another location, you don't want them to continue having that buff. You can click this option. Okay, modifiers. Now, you can make it so that a Sims um, gains skills at a certain rate, either faster or slower, based on the buff. So that's the multiplier here. We can, you can click Add. And you can pick the um, skill. I'm just going through this quickly because I'll go through this more in depth in the future. But um, you can go at a higher rate. You see I slide this up. Or you can go at a lower rate, to zero. That means no, no effect. Now, if you want it to go lower, that mean, means a much slower rate. You have to click the arrow here to the right. You can also completely type in a number. You can also make needs decay or increase at a certain rate. It works the same way as skills. You just click add, and then that. Relationships. So maybe while a sim um, has this particular buff, since they're confident, they make relationships much faster than they usually would. So I can click relationship, friendship, for example, long-term relationship, and I can hike it up. So this sim, when they have this buff, it works two times as well as it usually does. As far as emotions and buffs, again, you can decide if your, this buff will affect other weights with what they call a multiplier. So you'll see as explained here, it increases the strength of that emotion. So here it says the modifier of two for anger will make it so that the single one plus one anger buff will be treated like two. So you can multiply. And this can be used in a lot of different ways. We'll look at in the future as well. Symology. These are things that are... Um, are in the game such as reputation you can make it so that while this sim has this buff it makes their reputation decline faster or increase their empathy these are things that are in parenthood empathy conflict resolution responsibility manners emotional control those are all from parenthood if you have that pack and then reputation again is from the get famous pack and then there's advanced and these can increase things such as your statistics and there's different statistics in the game stats that's a little bit more advanced Actions. So this is something that can be used that while your sim has this buff, certain actions happen. So it can trigger things to happen. So maybe um, this sim will want to start doing a cheer um, for every 10 minutes. Or you want this sim to start jogging. Or you want the sim to do certain interactions. You can create an action, which is a loot also has a reference in version four of the mock constructor and then you can click on it browse now you can either choose something already in the game you know again it's by base game or expansion pack or relationship items such as increasing relationships or, or making them go down or you can create so once you want to create you click this open tab and then you can add conditions and again, you click here, this little wrench to the right. You can choose the conditions. So if it's based on a buff, it's based on how much money they have, relationship. Conditions are, again, certain conditions that have to happen in order for this to run. Now you can have it always run. 
or you can make it um, so that it's by certain things happening. So you see here, do nothing, and you can change that. Oh, sorry, that's the label. You can click here, and then you can change the different type, or you can continue, or you can delete it. Autonomy. So the Sims uses a thing called commodities to make a Sim want to perform certain actions more or less often. So you can click this and you can use things that are already in the game. So it'll, it will base it off of that. Um, again, this is something you want to play around with. I usually make my own, but that's a little bit more complicated to explain. So I'll do that in the future. Um, broadcasters. So broadcasters basically broadcast buffs or um, different things to other sims. So for example, when a sim is in your proximity, they can get a, a buff or an emotion. So this is um, shown here as an example. So let's say, you know, when sims are around vampires, they may be afraid. That's because the buff that the vampire has is a buff that is basically hidden and it broadcasts that fear emotion or buff to other sims in its proximity. So again, broadcasters, you can add a condition. So you can do it based on buff, trait. So let's say um, whitelist. So whitelist, this is certain traits that the, the sim has to have in order for the broadcaster to go out to them. Um, so let's say lazy as an event, select. And then the participant. So participants can either be the target sim or the active sim. That's based on your preference. Okay, we'll, we'll show examples of this in the future. Just like in version four, you can create social interactions. And here are special um, cases. You can say, is this something that only affects NPCs, this particular buff? Do you wanna show how long it's gonna um, take before it expires if you set a time duration you can hide it? And then here, do not refresh timeout. So if a sim already has it, it won't add on time to it. And the string, this will show underneath. So you want to say the dis, um, number of minutes remaining, a certain custom message, you can type that here. And it shows exactly how to display it. If you wanted to create an action or loot like we did in version four, you would just click loot action set and create element. And again, you can add conditions. If you wanted to create a certain social interaction, click that here. You can decide whether or not it's anonymous. Um, you can decide whether or not it's user directed. So user directed means that the, the actual sim can click on something, click on themselves based on how you create it and they can perform it. You can also make it hidden in the queue. You can make it a cheat. That means it's gonna show up if they have tests and cheats enabled. And you can also now click has Pi menu icon and click the icon and shoot. This will all be explained more in depth in the future. I just wanna do a quick rundown. And here you can decide whether it's a funny interaction, friendly or flirty, if it counts towards different goals, how long it's available, and you can also set conditions. You can set preferences. So if you wanted to make your own custom likes and dislikes, you put a name, the trait name, so likes, So you can put the name of likes and dislikes, the preference name. And choose the icon. So if we had a different icon for Pi, let's search and see. We don't, so we can just choose anything in that case. 
And again, if you have your own custom icon, you can just upload it. And then for category, you can choose here. And um, this is something you'll have to usually um, create or if you know how to get the um, use sims for studio to get different information like the category ID number, you can input it manually here. That's something I like to touch on based on in a future video, how to use sims for studio to find certain information. And then you can choose whether to allow this preference for certain ages. Then for the like, you put different models, actions, auto. you can basically do everything you pretty much can do with other traits. So this can, you can make it so that Sims get certain whims, maybe to eat pie if they like it, and dislike maybe to yell or something like that, you know, just a random example. Okay, so this is just a really a quick look at this particular um, update. I am going to go at, um, do a future video very soon that's more in depth. I want to go through each section. And I want to show you how you can really create more advanced options with this. Um, but my next video is going to be a little bit more focused around Sims 4 Studio and showing you different things you can do with that. Uh, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed and I'll see you next time.